here you see a list of um, key analysis that I used for um, WebTalk 6, and they are posted on the uh, WebTalk 6 website. So you have the step one analysis, the two level basic that we just talked about, step two, three, four, down to five. Now step two, if you remember, uh, is a regular two level analysis that does not explicitly take time into account. So I include it um, for pedagogical reasons to uh, contrast it with the uh, DSM analysis that follows. But let's take a quick look at this one. Just to remind ourselves, you have then, uh, in this case, no lagged or T interval options in the variable command. It's a standard two-level analysis. Uh, we, we add the word random because we're going to use some uh, random effects here, uh, random variances and correlations in this case. And therefore we're going to use estimator equals base, whereas in step one we use estimator, the ML maximum likelihood estimator. So here we have the uh, random variances, the residual variances, and the random correlations between the three variables in this case. And we do further modeling on between. So in this case, you the plot command will show you uh, between-level histograms, scatter plots, as before, uh, but also the three Bayesian type of outputs, posterior parameter distributions, parameter trace plots, and autocorrelation plots. But again, it's not a um, DSEM analysis, so instead Let's go and take a look at that, which is then uh, step three. So step three here, uh, we're going to go to uh, step three, model two, which was discussed in uh, segment seven. So that's two level DSIM two-level DSIM with a random residual variance. So the use variable list here is positive affect, and we delete some uh, clusters, four clusters, and we reduce time to uh, the uh, max that was intended. So we have cluster ID, T interval, and lagged. Two-level random, it's base, and we see then in the input also that I have this save data command to save the data that we talked about in the uh, slides. But the first thing that I look at in a uh, base run like this is I go down to the end and check tech 8. By the way, here you have the output for the uh, saved file that we talked about. I look for tech 8. And here it is, take eight, we show it like this. So we have the iterations up to 1000, and we have the PSR, potential scale reduction, and it goes down towards one. Now, I, if I see that, I would probably um, uh, double this in a, in a serious run to see that this PSR doesn't bounce up again to higher values but has actually settled on a value close to one uh, in a long, long sequence. Now then, after that, I go back and take a look at the uh, output in the beginning and um, get the summary of data here as before. And then I go down and see if there are any warnings here before the uh, Model, inform model results information. And there are no warnings here. So uh, I go further to take a look at the model results in the unstandardized form within and between where I decide on significance. And then in this case we also have the uh, standardized results because we have a random effect here. It's within levels, standardized estimates averaged over clusters. And then we have the between-level standardization. And we have various kinds of standardization 
as we do in regular M plus. Now, in terms of plots then, now we have used lagged and T interval. So uh, we can then take a look at uh, time series plots here for the first time. And here we have then time series plot for positive affect by subject or means of a subject. So for instance here then we have subject number one and here you can go forward to next subject or you can um, go to uh, a specific subject. How about our favorite subject uh, 20 and take a look at that. Or you just go for the uh, mean of the subject and you get this plot. And then you can uh, actually then see how many people are at these extreme values here. So at this low value it's just one subject like I was mentioning before. Same down here. One subject. Okay, show up. There you go. One subject here also. And here. And I think one up here too. So those you can then see how much attention you should pay for the pay, pay in terms of these low values. Maybe th they should largely be ignored. Now the uh, time interval plot here is then giving you, um, I haven't looked much at the histogram of subjects per time point, but the time interval plot uh, is a useful one for uh, looking at this discrepancy between the observed time and the uh, time that we use in the analysis. So then you have that discrepancy between blue and red dots here. And you see that, uh, the uh, max discrepancy for each individual here. And here you can plug in a specific individual. Let's say 41 is 41 is one that we have used before. And anyway, then um, how about the latent variable distribution? We have the usual base plots here, but what about the latent variable distribution? What should we expect to find there? Well, we have two random effects. We have the random residual variance log V and we have the uh, random mean. So log V then starting with that, this is what the distribution looks like. That's the posterior distribution of the log V. Skewed, you have the uh, non-symmetric, 95% non-symmetric credibility intervals confidence intervals, you have the mean, standard deviation, median and mode of the posterior, and these limits. And then going forward to the next person, here's the um, between mean, which is um, uh, quite skewed as well, I and mean, we saw the distribution of it in our slides as well. I also wanted to show you an output option that is useful for looking at factor scores. So this is uh, again the step 3 model 2 DSEM with a uh, random residual variance. So if you look at the output command here you have uh, a new option called FSComp. So that's factor score comparisons. And if you scroll down then to uh, Let's see, here we have between level factor score comparisons. And what you have then is for each random effect, in this case we have the random uh, residual variance log V, and we also have the random intercept, of course. You have a ranking 
cluster uh, and factor score columns that are repeated in uh, sets uh, in, in twice here in the columns. So the uh, person with the largest random variance in the log V metric is person number 36. And uh, then you can see how far away the others are from that value. And scroll down and find the last person, the smallest value, being over here to the right for person 466. And you have also uh, results for uh, BPA here, that is the random intercept. And the first, the, the person with the largest factor score on that is uh, person 466 with a value 6.983, very close to the maximum of the positive affect score. Uh, score maximum and the smallest is person 414 I think we've encountered him or her before with a value of 3.076 so that can be a useful um, option when you want to look at the details of your participants